crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that i sing you are life you are life in you death has lost its sting
Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. We've got a lot of uh, wonderful visitors here to hear the testimony of the day and to, to uh, be a part of some baptisms, and we're so excited that you're here. So welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, would you all stand up this morning as we get started? <clears throat> this morning, Suzanne and I were talking, and uh, we were realizing that at some point in time, we lost that that feeling that when we wake up in the morning, it's a blessing to, to just wake up. It's just a, a blessing to be able to take one more breath, to wake up, to open our eyes. And uh, today we were just, we were encouraged by, by thinking, you know what? Today is a gift. It's a gift just to be alive today. It's a gift just to have another opportunity to be with my family today. It's a gift just to have another opportunity uh, to, to be in God's presence on this earth one more day. Because we're not promised tomorrow. We don't know if something's going to happen or if something that we love is going to be gone. Or if we're just not going to wake up in the morning. And, um, and today, Suzanne and I just kind of were uh, re reminded for some reason that just waking up and taking our, our first breath is a gift from God. And uh, how refreshing it was to, to, to be in that moment and to, to just live today for God and live today for loving people. Um, I don't want to waste, if it's my last day, I don't want to waste it on hating people. I don't want to waste it on causing problems in relationships. I want to use this opportunity this day to love people better, to, to, to serve people better, and to make a difference in the world around me. And so that's my prayer for us today, that we can accept that that breath that we have is a gift from God. And I don't want to waste it on, on other things other than love and serving others. And I want to pray for us before we get started. God, I thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. God, I thank you so much for the breath that's in this room, the very breath that you put into our lungs. I believe that you created each one of us that's in this room, and you did it all on purpose, and we all have purpose. And uh, Lord, I pray that today you would just inspire our hearts and our minds towards loving and serving better. Um, God, I pray that you would remove anxieties today. I pray that you would remove pains today. I pray that you'd remove chains today. I pray that you'd remove anything that is not of your loving spirit today. And I pray that you'd replace that all with your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, we love you today. We're here to lift you up and we're here to celebrate what you're doing and what amazing things are happening in the lives of the people around us. God, we love you. We honor you today. We focus on you. We remove distractions from our minds and our hearts. It's all about you today. We're going to worship you and focus on you. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee.
God who is for us, not against us. And if he is on our side, nothing is impossible. And if our God's for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? shake their hand, say good morning, glad you're here. Any march there? Please don't fall. <laughs> Good morning.
Yeah, I knocked it off earlier. Good morning. Purple, purple, purple. There we go. Here I am. As you work your way back to your seats, uh, feel free to, to have a seat. It's exciting to have so much energy in the room. Uh, this morning, uh, we have uh, just a lot going on, but uh, I, I hope that it's going to be a special day for you. I hope it's going to be a special day for, for everyone that's here today. Uh, this morning, we've got a couple things that are really special. Uh, for this Sunday and for the next 55 weeks, we are going to be honoring someone's story each week. And so this morning, uh, in a little bit, you're going to hear Mr. Jeremy Dodson come up and share his story. Uh, but also a part of that is at the end of the service, he and his father, Bob, as well as Suzanne Kellum, who's standing over here, are all going to be baptized. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that as we come. Am I still buzzing? I'm sorry. I had a, uh, I had a catastrophic event a while ago when my, my, my whole pack fell off my hip and hit the ground. And so it seems like I lost my antenna in the process. Um, so we'll work on that, and hopefully you won't have to listen to static the whole time I'm up here today. Uh, but we've got that going on this morning. We've got communion this morning, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But I'm just excited to have you all here. Uh, someone came in and said that they had to park across the street this morning, which just tells me that that's a, a great problem to have. Uh, just a, a few announcements uh, that we've got going on. Uh, on the, the last Saturday of this month, on April 30th, uh, many of you may know that right at a year ago, we started hosting a Spanish congregation here in our church, and they are going to have their one-year anniversary service on Saturday night, April 30th. It will be translated into English, um, and so everyone, they have, they have sent out a special invitation to our congregation. They want to honor us and honor the hospitality and just the partnership and ministry that we've done together over the last year. Um, it starts at 7 p.m. Um, just so you're prepared, it goes till about 10 p.m. Uh, the, the Spanish congregation is far, far more exciting than we are. Um, and they tend to go on a little bit longer in their service than we do. But uh, just invite you to come and be a part of that. Also tonight, uh, tonight at 6.30, our men's group, our band of brothers. Uh, Eric, would you like to say anything about that for tonight? Thanks so much, Eric. Um, also, uh, just uh, for our youth, a couple of things. Uh, on the first and third Sundays of each month, which is this Sunday, today, um, we have uh, our youth leaders take the youth out, uh, and every, every person between the ages of sixth grade and a senior in high school are all welcome to be a part of that. Uh, they, they actually leave the building. They go across the parking lot. We have another building over across the parking lot, and that's where they go during that time. Um, and then also on the second Sunday of each month, from 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, they meet. And so just want to make that known. Um, also, we're, we're with this new series kicking off, uh, we just wanted to let everyone know that we have, we have groups that gather. Uh, some gather every week. Some gather once a month. But in your bulletin, there's just an insert. And uh, if you want to know more about that, please uh, go onto our church website and check that out. Uh, there are Tuesdays and Thursday night groups that meet off-site. Uh, well, actually, one meets here on Tuesday night. And Thursday night, there's a group that meets here in Pendleton at a home. Uh, of Dale and Kathy Harriman. You're invited to that. There's also men's group, women's groups, and youth groups. And so please check out any and all of those. That I want to say something about April okay. 23rd is uh, a youth mini retreat thing that we're putting together here. And I'm bringing in 
the band that was at the uh, retreat with my brother and the band. They're going to come in and be there with us. I'm um, bringing in Todd Faulkner, who's going to be speaking for us, uh, which is great. He's going to really open up some cool things for us. For those who don't know who that is, would you tell them? Todd Faulkner, uh, he used to be a pastor here, but he more recently was the um, campus pastor at Anderson University, and he's teaching there. Uh, we have to call him Dr. Faulkner now because uh, he has this degree, but um, he's great at, at, at opening up our imagination and, and just doing some great things. Then I've got another person coming, and her name's Tamara. And uh, she's going to be sharing an incredible story. Um, and just the fact that she can even bring purpose and life out of such a, a past is really cool. And you don't want to miss that. So it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have free lunch, uh, which means in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be asking some of you guys to help out with some lunch. Uh, and I'm going to be asking for some also, if you're ever interested now in the future about being part of the youth group as an adult or if you're a parent, let me know. Um, I'm inviting you as well to come and, and just kind of be a part of that. If you can't be there at 10 a.m., that's okay. Or if you have to leave early, that's fine. But it's 10 to 4. I'm inviting the, the Spanish youth and um, some others. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be a day to... We often don't focus on, on God and on God's things very often. And so it's another opportunity for us to, as a youth group, to do that again. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Eric. Um, and one other thing, and, and I'm sorry to the visitors, this is kind of an inside announcement, but uh, this week in our church we celebrated uh, a new member, a new birth uh, with the, uh, the Chitwood family. Uh, many of you have had the opportunity to meet uh, Taylor and Amanda. If you haven't, they're an awesome couple, and I forgot to give Chris the picture this morning, but uh, there's a picture. Uh, we sent it out by email, and I can get it later, but... Uh, we're, as, as typical here in the church, whenever we have a family that gives birth, we want to honor them by giving some food, uh, helping them out in the first couple of weeks. For those of you who have had children, you understand you don't remember much of those first couple of weeks, um, and you don't really know how you get through them. So, uh, so I'm going to start this over here, and uh, if, you're, if you're a visitor today and this comes in front of you, please just pass it on. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to start that over here with Mr. Brian and Miss Amy. Is there, on that there is an address. In fact, this week I did something cool. Um, at the bottom, whatever day you sign up for, there's a tear-off at the bottom that you can take and put on your refrigerator to remind you. So, but it's got their phone number, their address. Uh, so, ooh, see, I, I can do technical things every now and then, right? Um, so, all right, uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, <laughs> Uh, one of the things we do in our church, uh, in our services, we like to honor our children. Um, and the way that we do that is we teach them about giving back. So our kids are going to come around and they're going to take up any loose change you might have that you'd want to give. Uh, we call this our penny march. Uh, this money goes to support four children that we support in South Paraguay. Um, and so if you have loose change today, feel free to give it to the kids as they come by. If you don't, when they come by with their sad eyes, just raise your hands in complete surrender and they will move on. So, kids, go get your money. The greatest day in history. 
story that was beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty cross, the empty grave. Mr. Children's Church. Thank you, Malachi. Now, we also have a time in our service for our adults to have that opportunity to give. Uh, and I pray that you give as joyfully as our kids do as well. Um, and with so much energy, too. I mean, if if we ask you to give and you guys choose to run around up here, then that's awesome uh, to give. Um, the excitement at which they, they offer their offerings is great. Our time of offering is a time for more than just money. Our time of offering here in this service is a recognition that, that God cares for us each and every day. Some of us feel like we may be in a valley and other of us feel like we may be on a mountaintop at this time. And so where you're at determines how you're able to give. And so this morning, for those who are visiting, your gift to God, your gift to us is being here. And we are so thankful that you're here today and you weren't invited here to give us your money. Your gift of being here and observing what God is doing and, and hearing for his voice this morning, that is the gift that we are so thankful for for you this morning. For those who call this their church home, this is that opportunity to give back in accordance to how we see God's blessing in our life. And so within this group, we know that there are those who have the ability to give and give greatly. And we also know that in a group this size, there are those who come with many needs. And so if this morning you came here and you thought, man, I didn't have a gift to give. In fact, I don't even know how I'm going to pay my utility bill this month. Then this is also a time for you. I would encourage you in this time that you spend time in your seat thinking about and praying about the energy to, to speak to me after the service today. If you're struggling today, we want to know because we want to know how we can partner with you, how we, can, how we can join with you in meeting the needs that are before you. And so this is a time for that. This is also a time 
that if you have a prayer request or, or a praise, you can write that down on, on your bulletin. There's a tear off page on your bulletin. You can write that down. And our group that meets on Thursdays will be glad to pray for any and every need that you have. And if you would like to come Thursday at 5.30, that is a time that any of you can come and pray as well. But in this time, the way we do this, the logistically, the, how we do that is, we have baskets up here at the front, and this is a time that you can come and you can bring your gifts here to the foot of this cross, putting every need that you have, every gift that you have at the feet of God so that he can bless them and make them larger than you ever could. So I'm gonna take a moment and pray for this time and then during this next song, as, as God lays it on your heart, if you wanna bring something and put it here in the basket for God. Father, we are thankful for the many things you do for us. Father, we are thankful for the times that we have food on our table and roofs over our heads and the times that, that the bills seem to get paid easily. But Father, we also recognize that just because things are tough, it does not mean that you aren't with us. It means that you were walking with us through those difficult times. And so Father, there are many times in our lives that we are blessed beyond riches, but more in our heart and in our soul. And so, Father, for everyone this morning that comes, if there is a hurt or a heartache or, or something that is holding them back, that this morning they would be relieved of that. This morning that while they're in this place, while they're, while they're here among your people, that they would feel comfort and grace and love and compassion. And, Father, I pray, like the story we're going to hear in a few moments, that we will all be overcomers that we will all be able to face whatever circumstances are thrown at us and work through them because we know that you are walking with us. Father, in this time, we lift up the ministries that are supported both locally and around the world. Pray for those who are, who are recipients of each and every gift. Father, we pray for those who are able to give and more importantly, we pray for those who are not able to give, that they will receive your blessing in a fresh new way today. Father, we thank you for this place and this time. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
that you would begin to overcome the obstacles that are between us and your love, the obstacles that, that are between us and your grace, that are between us and your forgiveness. God, there are so many obstacles and hurdles that we put up, so many walls of defense. Lord, I pray that you begin to break down those walls today. God, I know that you overcame and I know that you will continue to overcome, God. I pray that, that in a, even if it's just in a small way, that you would break through and let some light in on our lives where we've just walled ourselves up and not allowed you in. God, I pray that, you would, that your spirit would be strong through everyone that speaks today. I thank you for the life of Jeremy, who's going to be sharing his testimony today. And I thank you for that life of overcoming. And God, I pray that that life of overcoming can inspire others today, um, that you do overcome, that there is hope. God, and I thank you for the opportunity to be a part of Baptism Sunday. And God, I pray that the new life that's generated today through these baptisms would just start an incredible new wave of your mercy in each person's life that, that goes under these waters and then comes back up a new person. God, we know there's nothing special there's nothing magical about the water and the baptism pool, but we know that, that you are powerful and it's just, a, it's just a, an incredible moment to be submersed and to come out realizing that all the stuff that we've held on to, all the pain and all the, all the sorrow and all of the junk and all of the old life, we can leave there. God, I pray that you would inspire us who maybe not be going into the waters today to know that we can leave all of those things today here in this building at your feet leave them all here, that you're going to take care of us. Um, God, we just love you and we thank you. We thank you for overcoming. We thank
thank you that you will overcome. We love you. We praise you. And we honor you. Everything we do today is all about you. In Jesus' name, I pray all of those things. Amen. 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 You guys can have a seat. And somebody said, thank goodness he stopped praying. My goodness. <laughs> Let me start that again. What an honor it is to be here today and, and to be a part of a congregation who is looking at life from a new perspective. This entire year, as we're coming into it, um, starting on Easter last week through all the way through next Easter, which is 55 weeks from now, um, we're going to be taking a moment and we're, we're going to work to, to honor God by honoring the stories from people here in our congregation. And, and so in that, I am continually asking, there is a place on our website, uh, PendletonChurchOfGod.org. You go on there and there's a place you can click and you can leave uh, just a quick snippet about your story, just a, just a, a quick word about, about what God's doing in your life, enough that would give me just a, a little bit of insight to know that you're willing and you want to share. There's also a place on there that you can drop pictures. Um, we want pictures of, of people, places, events that have changed your life, uh, places that you have seen God at work, and, and you can drop those there, and we're going to be using those to build this large mosaic over the year of, of pictures that involve your life. Who are you praying for? What has transformed you? Where have you seen God at work? And that's all going to go into this one major mosaic picture. And so I just want to encourage you to take some time to think about that, to pray about that. Um, I don't have to know your specific story. Um, at this point in time, I know who's going to be bringing their stories through the middle of May. Next week, you're going to get to hear a story from Miss Jeanette Parks. Very excited. I've read through what she wants to say. Um, she's written it out. She's typed it out. It's right there in front of her because she knows if she looks up, she'll never remember what she's going to say. But she's going to bring you that story. The following week, it'll be Miss Jean Lehman. Um, and so Miss Jean and I are going to be getting together this week or next, and we're going to be, get, be talking about that and how we honor her story. Um, the week after that, it'll be Mr. David Price. I don't know where David went. Everybody, there he is back in the back corner. Um, and uh, and um, who is the week after that? Oh, that is Mother's Day. And on Mother's Day, one of the things we do here in our congregation is uh, we used to give a bunch of little trinket Mother's Day gifts, and we would spend uh, a couple hundred dollars doing that. And, and just over time, we realized there was a whole lot better things that we could do with that. Um, and so rather than just giving, giving every, every woman in our church a, a, a daisy or something like that, we chose that there's a ministry in Anderson that we support called Sister to Sister. And they're going to have one of, the, one of the ladies, I believe a lady who's actually graduated from their program. Uh, these are for women uh, who were either coming out of the prison system, being reintroduced into the world, or uh, they have a, a, a boyfriend or a husband who has been in the prison system, and, and they're taught how to live out and how to tr make those transformations in life. And so on that morning, we will take the money that we would normally give uh, to all of our moms, and we want to use it to make a, a bigger difference, um, and we also take up just a special collection from anyone who would like to give to that. So just so you know, we have it planned out, and I have another 15 people who have already told me I'm willing to share my story, although I don't know which one I want to share with you, and so I'm going to be tapping those people on the shoulder, and so right now, we could go through the month of October with what's already been given to me, and just two weeks ago, I was going, I don't know what I'm going to do for May. And so uh, just an awesome, awesome thing. But this morning, I, I wanted to give you just a little bit of backdrop to, to what we've been doing. Um, and so we started this process two years ago in, the, in this concept of making a world of difference by trusting God. And so we started with this concept of, of going deeper. And so there's, there's, 
these, there's these six picture things that are on the wall, posters, that's what they're called. Um, and, and these are the six series that we went through to kind of go through the basics of who we see God as here in our congregation. The entire next year, we, we spent all the way up until last week, up until this, this Easter, uh, we spent looking at the various people who came face-to-face with Jesus or God and how that changed their life in our series called Live Like Jesus. And this coming year is Depend on the Spirit. We believe that when the last word of the book of Revelation was written, that God didn't stop speaking then. He still speaks, and he speaks through you and I. And so your stories are important. They're important to get out there and to be told. And so every week we're going to be sharing a story. This morning, we have a very special gentleman. Um, Jeremy Dodson is going to come. Uh, You can come on up this way, Jeremy. And he's going to share his story. Um, Don't worry. It's only this long. Um, So... But I do have 28 slides of sermon material after that. So, uh, so worry about that. Um, but, but Jeremy, uh, to remind you, everyone out here, they want to see you succeed, not fail. Jeremy's a little nervous to be up here this morning. And so um, I want to pray for you so you can share your story. Um, but then later we're going to get to hear a little bit more about you too as, as we baptize you this morning. So. God, this morning, I just pray for Jeremy that you will touch his body, that you will touch his lips, that you will touch his mind. Father, that you will will bring about in his life healing. You will bring about in his life strength and courage and grace. And Father, this morning, that he will get through this testimony time without saying something that he'll regret. We give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, buddy. start with, um, this all started back in like 1990, December 1990. I was just out riding my bike and I had a bike wreck because I had a little speedometer on there and um, the cable came off and wrapped around the front tire and the fork of the tire and I flipped over that. And hit in the back of my head on the pavement and for some reason that just didn't go too well. And the, your head in the pavement just doesn't mix too well. I was like, hey, what do you expect? But anyway, I go to the, to the hospital immediately thereafter and I was in the hospital for about 17 days and then comatose for 10. And I mean, Waking up from a coma, I mean, you just, and not knowing where you're at, that, hey, that's not a very fun thing to do. Because, I mean, you're laying there in a bed and you're not knowing what's going on. That's, believe me, you don't want to do that. This is not my idea of fun. Because, I mean, that's when you have that little weird dude saying, hey, welcome to the Twilight Zone. So, um, and the doctors, they were, they were all over the place, and they didn't, they really didn't think I was going to make it, and because, um, like I said, being in a coma for 10 days and having to be fed through a tube and all that, and, and then having all the nurses and doctors come in and check on you, and that little gizmo going out, and all that, and it just not... Like I said, that's just not my idea of fun, but I mean, I mean that's just not something that you ask for to begin with. So, um, I was I was given medicine from doctors that I think they got their medical degree from cereal box anyway, because <laughs> these medicines that they, they gave me um, they weren't supposed to go together, and I was taking that for a while, and I was, I was having these wild seizures, and once again, there's that little guy again saying, "Hey, you're in the twilight zone," because I, I was having some wild seizures. I was having what they called the grandma seizures, putting me in the hospital. I was spending time in the hospital and not knowing what was going on, and I mean when you're in the hospital, and the only reason you know you was in the hospital was people were t- 
telling you, like, once you've been out of the hospital, they ask you, hey, what was it like in the hospital? And you're like, what are you talking about? Because you didn't even know you was there. I mean, because this is how I was living, because I was, after I had a seizure, I didn't know what, I, what had happened, because my short-term memory is basically just gone from these seizures and from this wreck, because it's just, it's gone. So that's usually when some when you one of you have said something to me, and then about two three minutes later, I'll I'll have to ask you again. Excuse me from that, but my short term memory is gone. It, yeah, but um, but I've been I've had like two or three, maybe four doctors that have tried different things on me and. But like I said, that one doctor, how he got a medical degree, I, I think he paid somebody or something, because I, I don't know. But um, they've, tried, they've got um, new things in me right now. they got uh, this gizmo in me where um, I've, when I have a seizure, it'll kind of pick up the, on the nerve because it's on the nerve right now and when I have a seizure it'll send like an electric sense to that nerve and kind of knock it out and it it goes off on its own every so often and it'll send that electric nerve to to that nerve and um, just knock it out of play and then the seizure will it'll just go on its own little merry way there and the one that I had prior to that, I've kind of outgrown it, so to speak, or just, it's just gone its, its own little way, and I can't, or it won't work anymore. So they, every time one comes new to the market, so to speak, they put it in my head, and it makes me feel more and more like the Terminator. Because <laughs> I got this gizmo in my head, and then, in my chest and I take this this little magnet that I keep clipped on me and if I I can take care of these seizures when they come on if I catch them in time because I'll feel kind of lightheaded and if I catch them in time I can take this little magnet and swipe it across my chest where this is at it's, it's called a, a GNA system it's a um, general nerve Something or other. I I couldn't tell you what exactly what it was, but um, anyway, I can if I catch these uh, seizures in time, I can swipe this across my chest, and it'll send that uh, little gizmo into play, and it'll click on that nerve in my head, and then it'll get the seizure calmed down. There are times when I have the um, what they call the grandma seizures, and those are, those go like high speed, and I just can't do anything about them because they'll they'll go berserk on me, and I just can't do anything about them, and I'll end up in that's when I'll end up in the hospital, and I'll just go crazy. But what I'm kind of getting at here is I must be must have been here on earth for says for a reason rather god must have seen some reason for me to be here because i've had these seizures numerous amount of times and i just not gotten up from them except for like a little while after so i mean god must have seen a reason for me to actually be here so that's why i'm thinking there's just some reason that I'm here, some reason, some person that I'm here to take care of or somebody that I need to sit straight, like, like Dad, for instance. <laughs> I, need to, I need to slap him around or something and just, just take care of him. Or, or just some un, undone service or something that I just haven't taken care of yet. 
and that's another reason why God has just left me here on this earth because this epilepsy is has knocked me out numerous amount of times because I've I've gotten I've woken up in a in the hospital from these grandma seizures amounts of times and they said well you're lucky to even be here pal because you've died from these and then I'm like well okay and then I never seen Elvis or anything. What, what's going on? I mean, so, but, but something's going on. But so I said, I must be here for a reason. I mean, it just amazes me what technology can do nowadays. But, and since, like I said, since Dad and I've been coming here, I've just, like I said, things have just been going great for Dad and I. I mean, just that's, and it's just. Like I said, that's when they started putting this the new one in me, the new GNS bill or DNA or whatever it's called, and um, things have just been going even better for me. So that's, that's another reason I'm just glad that Dad and I have been here, and another reason I I think that um, there must be some reason that God or that's another reason I say that God's out there and looking down on us and watching us and watching our how we play and how we go because I say that God's there and he's doing what he, what we should be or watching out for us just make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and so I say there's a reason for everything and this is what it's for so I just ready for this and so thank you all for hearing my number <laughs> I'll call you back up later for baptism. Yeah. So. No, you just take it back. There's, you can hand it to Chris back there. He's got a trash can. One of the things that Jeremy shared with me that, that had a great impact when we were having lunch this week, uh, Ryan and I went to lunch with him and and maybe, maybe you're on Facebook or maybe you follow our YouTube page and you saw what Ryan posted, just kind of a snippet. But uh, along the path, one of the things that Jeremy's story took me to was the fact that God has built him to be an overcomer. God has built him not necessarily to, to work outside of his illness. Um, God has not chosen to heal you yet, Jeremy. And maybe there's a reason for that. But, but Jeremy has seen that God is walking with him in this illness. Um, he shared with, with us that when, when he got out of the hospital the first time, that he was, uh, he was told he would never go back to school. Um, that, that the seizures would be too much. The overload and sensation would be such that he was just going to have to be homeschooled if he ever desired to get a degree or a high school degree. And, and, uh, and so after a semester of, of being tutored in his home, uh, the, the tutor said, you shouldn't be here. You should be at school. And so, um, so the doctor agreed, somewhat reluctantly, he said, and he went to school. Uh, they put him in basic classes, um, and he was there for a semester, and the teacher said, we don't know why you're here. And so uh, they, they connected with the doctor and, and convinced the doctor, and the doctor said, okay, that's fine. Let's try general courses. Well, he graduated got his degree, and he's worked multiple jobs throughout his time, and he should have never been able to do that. And so I see that as the story of Overcomer. And so when, when I began to think about that, there were several stories that I thought about, but this scripture is what came to my mind. And so I just want to kind of walk through it with you, and then I'll back up and kind of take it bit by bit to show you. Um, I'm going to speak to Jeremy some specifically, but I want you to understand that what I say to Jeremy is actually intended for all of us. So let's read through the scripture. It's uh, James chapter 1, starting in verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. 
Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the winds. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation. Since, we will pass away like a, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its, blossoms fall, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they ha- go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by the devil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they, are, when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. He, clo- he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be the kind of first fruits of all he created. Now, I want to I tell you, when I first looked at this, I wanted to pick and choose my scriptures because there are parts in there that I went, that doesn't make sense. Um, and that's not going to preach very well. And so uh, Ryan and I met and we talked about it and we, we thought about it and um, and. and after, after praying about it, it just opened up some new insights to me, and I thought these would be great insights to share with all of you, um, especially to share with Jeremy, who, who is in the process of overcoming. But I'm going to guess, I'm going to put a shot in the dark here, that he's not the only one who is in circumstances that they don't know how they're going to get out of. I'm going to guess that we all desire to be overcomers. So let's move through this and just kind of take it for a moment. This first part, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. The word trial and perseverance were things that caught my eye, uh, mostly because one of the things I do, um, I I have been trained uh, in Greek and Hebrew. That does not mean that I open up a Hebrew Bible or a Greek Bible and just read it fluently. But I know enough to ask questions. And so often what I'll do, and this is something I would encourage you to do, especially if you're coming across a scripture that that just brings questions, I would find it in in five or six different translations. Uh, It's very easy to do if you have the internet. You can go to BibleGateway.com and you can just look at it in several different translations. But find where words are similar and find where words are different. And the words that were different in this were the words trials and perseverance, which I thought were the most important words in all of this. And so I thought, I'm going to go look up in the original Greek and see what they mean. So that's what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't have a Greek font on that computer because the first word was in the Greek lettering. So that's funny. But the word in this one that's trial is perasmoi. Um, now, you can say that with me if you want. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Because there, there are three different translations for this word. And I thought it was kind of interesting because we in the English language see these as a progression rather than as the same thing. But in the Greek nuances, they're felt in the same way. Temptation. When I think of the word temptation, I think of an instance. You know, um, I, what kind of example can I come up with this one? Um, something comes on the TV that I shouldn't see or shouldn't hear, and the temptation is to leave it there. You know, um, uh, if I'm exposed to something that I struggle with. Reese's peanut butter, Rachel. Oh, good, good <laughs> example. Yeah, we just got done with Easter and the Reese's peanut butter cup Easter eggs. I mean, it's the perfect consistency of chocolate and peanut butter. You can't get better. And yeah, they're on clearance right now, everywhere, yes. So temptation, it's like, I can't buy that. Very good example. Thank you so much, Eric. But then there's, then there's trials, and this is something that seems to be a little bit longer lived than that. 
Um, someone was telling me this morning that they've got jury duty coming up, and so they're like this trial that's going to be a week long or two weeks long. And so you think about that, a trial is a longer-lived temptation, other than something that's just a flash in front of you that you could choose to walk past or not. It's, it's a longer thing. But then the third translation is affliction. And, and Jeremy, I'm not going to say you're afflicted, but I'm saying that, that the epilepsy within you, I know your dad's laughing at you now, but the, 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 the epilepsy that is within you is an affliction, and that is something that is lifelong. That is something that's going to walk with you for a very long time. And how you work within those situations is what we're talking about. Temptations, trials, and afflictions. The upmano, um, <laughs> say that three times, um, that is the, the next word, and that is the word that, that is perseverance in the, in the passage that we read. But it's more than that. It's about patience. It's about endurance. It's about being constant and about persevering. And I thought that was an important one to look at, too, because perseverance is not really a word we use outside of Sunday school. And so what are the other translations for that? What are the other words for that? And I thought these were really good because patience seems to be a shorter lived, maybe, maybe having patience in a temptation type of setting. Endurance is a little bit longer than that, more of a trial kind of a situation. Um, I, can in, I can't endure a race, but some of us can endure racing, running a race. Um, that's a shorter type of deal. Um, and then you've got constant. That is this, this is who God made me to be, and I am right here, and I will not budge. And so that's, I thought those were really good, and, and this was just coming straight out of the Greek lexicon uh, in the order that they talked about them, but they kind of matched up really well. And so anytime those words come up, I want you to think about that, because that word, and depending on what version you're reading, the word that we read as temptation could be a trial, it could be an affliction. And when we talk about perseverance, that could be patience, just waiting it out a little bit. It could be endurance, which is a much longer wait, or it could be constant, which is a lifelong process. So let's look at this. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed from the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. And the first time I read this, I was like, man, James is just like, take that. You know, I mean, he's, he's, like, he's like really grinding you in. And I realized that there's, there's a bigger question to this. The question throughout Scripture is not, do you believe in God? Do you believe God? Do you believe God when he says, behold, I will always be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Do you believe that? Because if you believe that, it changes the way you act. And, and in that, I mean, there, you know, I, know, I know plenty of people who tend to struggle with this belief factor. Um, and, and I can believe God up to a certain point, and then it, it's got to be my control. I have to be able to take over and make sure that this happens. And, and I, don't get me wrong, I totally struggle with this myself. So I'm not standing up here pointing at anyone. But, but I think we all have these control issues. And what God is saying is if you will leave it to me, I will care for you. I will be with you. Whether it's good times or bad, you will never be alone. And if you can't get that, if you struggle with, with the back and forth of it's, it's God's control, no, it's my control, it's God's control, that's where it talks about being double-minded. And that, that means there's times that you're going to speak with wholehearted confidence, and right after that you're going to say something really stupid. We've all been there. I don't think I'm preaching, I don't think I'm preaching to the choir I think, I think we're all part of this process where we, where we go back and forth in time. And, and so what I'm asking is, do you believe God? And what I'm insisting is you should begin to believe God. Believers in humble, humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. 
For the sun rises in scorching heat and withers the plant. It blo- it blossoms, its blossoms fall and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Again, when I first read this, I went, why is James just picking on rich people? Because whether you agree or not, if you live in the United States and you have shoes on your feet, you have more income disposable than, than 98% of the world. If you have shoes on your feet, you are richer than 70% of the world. Now that's a sobering thought. Because I think at last count I have six pairs of shoes in my closet. And some of them I don't even like that much. They're uncomfortable. I, 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 have, I have food that gets thrown away at my house. I don't eat all of it. Um, broccoli and cauliflower and things like that. Amy can't eat them all, so <laughs> she's laughing and shaking her head. Um, but, but this is to remind us, believers in humble circumstances, if you are poor financially, you ought to take pride in your high position. If you follow God, you... Woo! <laughs> I'm going to set that down for a minute. If you are a child of God, you are a son or a daughter of the God that created everything that you see. If you are poor, take pride in your humble circumstances. Take pride in your high position because you don't have anything financially to put between you and God. But if you're rich, there seems to be an awful lot of temptations, trials, and afflictions. If you're, if you're wealthy, there's an awful lot of things that you can gravitate to. And that doesn't necessarily just mean financial wealth. Um, I, I know several people who are blessed with amazing families, and they put their families on pedestals ahead of God. And what happens is, is you see a breakdown you see a breakdown between the children and the parents and, and God because, because the order is out of line. So what this is saying is, it, it talks an awful lot about money here. It says, guys, remember that just like the poor person, you're dying. You may just not want to get there as fast as they're okay with getting there. Remember, life is short. Times can get tough. And it's all going to fade away. Those riches, they're going to burn up. My favorite joke growing up was the the rich man who decided that he wanted to be buried with his wealth. And so upon dying, he had all of his money converted into gold bricks. And he had them buried with him. And so he shows up at heaven and he's carrying this heavy suitcase. And he gets up to the gates of heaven and St. Peter's there. And he goes, dude, what do you got in the suitcase? He opens up and he goes, why'd you bring paving stones? Our money means nothing to the heavenly, heavenly realm. So we ought to remember to not get caught up in what's around us. So where is your security? Is your security in the fact that you can eat, drink, and be merry anytime you want to? Or is your security in the fact that God is going to care for you each and every day? Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who, live, who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. When I read this, I, I, I put highlights around the word crown of life. Jesus is referred to as the Son of Man, and he wore a couple of different crowns during his lifetime. Um, When he was brought in as a baby, wise men traveled from the far east, and they brought him gifts that were fit for a king. And so there were times in his life where he wore a golden crown. But the final crown that he wore when he walked the earth as a man was a crown of thorns. And so it was, it was really interesting when Ryan and I talked about this because, because he, saw it, he saw it a different way. He thought, he thought that was the crown of humility, and I thought, well, that's his final crown. That's, that's the crown in heaven, the one that's made out of, you know, pillow uh, clouds and all kinds of things like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's this royal, massive crown. 
um, because he has received his eternal reward. And I think it kind of does both. We have to remember that God is the I am. Uh, We talked about that for just a moment last Sunday. The I am, the name of God that is given, that that he speaks to Moses uh, when at the burning bush, is 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 a word that is really, really difficult for us in the English language because that what it really means is I was who I am being and always will be. It's in a, it's in a, it's it, the closest thing we have is like the perfect present participle, but it's called the aorist tense in Greek, and it is a continuation from past to future. And I've always thought if God's name is that difficult to understand, we shouldn't be able to understand Him just in a blink of an eye. God isn't the one that tempts us. In fact, Satan tries to tempt him three times in Scripture that we read about. And Jesus stands up each time to the temptation. God is not going to try to tempt you with evil things. If you are tempted to do something, it's you or it's Satan. But it's not God. God is the one who gives you the strength. God is the one who gives you the perseverance. And that is his role in life. And so whether that is to earn a crown for today, an accomplishment today where you are, inst- you are ushering in the kingdom of heaven. I believe that, that every day we have two options. We have the opportunity to usher in the kingdom of heaven by how we treat people, or we have the opportunity to usher in the kingdom of hell by how we treat people. So each day you choose the crown you will wear. So what are you working through? What are you working for? That's your crown. What are, you, what are you looking at? And lastly, then after desires have conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. The word of truth. One of the truths that we speak around here is that God created you to love you and he loves you just because he created you. You don't earn God's love. You ask for his forgiveness. And that should change everything about how we see God. Overcoming is not about ending the circumstances. Jeremy, you may always live with epilepsy. But it is about you allowing God to be stronger than the circumstances. And so this morning, what I want to tell you is maybe you have your own affliction in life, your own temptation in life, your own trials. And in that, God does, may not ever remove that. God may not ever pull that out of, out of your way, but don't forget that he has the ability to walk through it and overcome it. Our God that overcame death has the ability to overcome anything that is in your path. And so he will walk with you. And so this morning, the way that this all got started, this morning is a baptism Sunday, and I've actually thought about it. I'm going to leave the water in the tank for one more week in case somebody today at the end of the service goes, Man, I, I, I didn't really bring anything to change into, but, but I think I want to do that. Well, there's going to be water for another week. But Jeremy and Bob, three weeks ago, we broke up into groups to pray with one another and, and asked the question of, is there anything in your life right now that is holding you back from accomplishing everything you believe God has for you? And I was, I was up here, and I was praying for some people, and and, uh, and they were praying back there with Buck. And Buck raised his hand and waved at me and said, Pastor, come here. And so I went back there, and, and they, they said, you know, we've never been baptized. And we would like, we would like to do that. Uh, we think that could be something that's holding us back. And, and Jeremy, you, think, you say, you know God saved you for something. Maybe today is a part of that. Now, I'm not saying that so that you die tomorrow. <laughs> but but I, think, I think empowering you to share your story with people around you is exactly what you're saved for. And your story is important to people. 
Your story can change people's lives because God has walked with you through it. And so this morning, Bob and Jeremy are going to be baptized. And, and we're going to celebrate that with them. Uh, we also have a third person that's going to be baptized, Suzanne uh, Kellum, um, our associate pastor's wife. And I'm going to talk to you about that here in a few minutes. Um, but one of the things we do is, is in the Church of God, we actually have three ordinances, things that were ordained by Jesus that we believe it's important for us to practice all the time. One of those happened at the Last Supper. Um, many of you know the Da Vinci painting of the Last Supper um, where they're all kind of gathered around this table and Jesus breaks bread and all that kind of stuff. Um, in that, he says that the bread that you're about to eat, this bread of redemption, this, this bread of sacrifice, this is my body and I'm breaking it for you. And then he does the same thing with a glass of wine and he says this is also for you as, as a symbol of my sacrifice for you. And so this morning... While, while Jeremy and, and, and Suzanne and, and Bob all go and get changed for their baptism, we're going to partake in communion. Um, uh, another thing that, that is, when Jesus first entered his ministry, he was baptized. And so that's why we do that. We do that to recognize with him. Now, um, depending on which church background you come from, just a quick explanation. The church of God does not believe that those waters are what save you. We believe that the moment you bow before God and you offer him your heart and your life, that is the moment that you are saved for heaven. But we believe that coming here is, is a grand part of, of the ritual of standing before friends and family and pronouncing and proclaiming that I want God to be first and foremost in my life and I want you to be witnesses to that so you can pray for me and hold me accountable. And so that's what, that's what we're having this morning. The third one is one that we practiced just a few weeks ago um, on, on uh, the, the Seder meal, our Thursday night meal of Holy Week right before uh, Easter. And that is, that is when Jesus was there at the Last Supper, he washed his disciples' feet to cleanse them and prepare them for the life they would live. And so we also participate in that as a congregation uh, in different ways because some people think feet are pretty icky because um, they are. <laughs> Uh, I don't like your toe jam any more than I like mine. And so we often wash hands, and we're not going to do that this morning, so it's okay. You chill out. You're all right. Um, but, but during this time of response, I just I want to I wanna leave you with kind of this question uh, or this statement. God is the same then, now, and forever. And Jeremy, to you, and to everyone else here, he will help you overcome. And so our response this morning, a time to come and, and to pray, um, our altars are here and they're always open. And, and so I'm going um, to invite Jeremy and Bob and Suzanne as our, our baptismal people this morning uh, to be the first ones in line to get their, their communion. But logistically, up here up front, There's a tray of little thimble-sized shots of grape juice. Um, and that is to represent the blood of Christ that was poured out for you and I. And then also here in the middle, there's these little crackers. And that is to represent the fact that, that God allowed his body to be broken and then to be resurrected for you and I. And so I'm going to offer a prayer for these elements and a prayer for these three uh, men and women who are going to come and be baptized here in a moment. Um, and then I would invite you, whenever you feel comfortable, you may come and, and take, um, and Bob and Jeremy and Suzanne are going to go change clothes during that time frame, and then we'll move into our baptismal service. Let me pray for this time. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for the gift of redemption we thank you for your grace, your love, and your compassion. May we remember those things as we share life with those around us. May we remember those things in this moment as we come and celebrate you overcoming death and you walking with us that we may overcome life. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
know that you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow I will not fear I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave In the midst of deep sorrow, I see your light is breaking through. The dark of night will not overtake me. I'm pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle And I will not fear I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me I am not alone I am not alone You will Jeremy, can you hear me? Have they changed yet? <laughs> yeah, they're in there. Tell them not to come out until they are changed. <laughs> As uh, Bob and Jeremy come forward, I, I would like to invite, uh, I know that they brought a lot of family with them. If you would like to come and join them here on the stage, there's a place right over here that is reserved for you to come and be a part of this special moment for them. Um, you guys can come on down in here with me. Um, and any other, any other close friends, if you'd like to come as well, uh, feel free to come and be a part of this with them. Believe me, they're, 
One of the things that baptism is not. Baptism is not Bob or Jeremy coming and standing before you and saying, I got it figured out. My life is going to be perfect. My decisions are going to be perfect from this time forward. But baptism is about, Bob, this morning, are you standing here saying before friends, family, and loved ones that, you're, that you want to have God as the first place in those decisions? Yes, I do. Jeremy, is that the same statement that you were making this morning? Yes, I do. All right. It is with those professions of faith that we baptize this morning. And so who wants to go first? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not strong enough to do both of them at the same time. Jeremy, would you actually stand over here on the other side of your dad and help him? Okay. Oh, for yeah. you guys to be a part. No, don't hold him down. Oh. <laughs> Based upon your profession of faith and in the, pre in the presence of your family and friends, it is my pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As they come out and everybody sits down, this is a song that means a lot to them, and so we're going to sing this uh, as a celebration. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once, I once was lost, but now. She wanted to, to start her baptism by sharing with you a song that's meant a lot to her. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. So this song, I, I love it so much, but we didn't really practice. 
And um, so I'm just going to share the lyrics. Um, I really encourage you to listen to it. It's just, it's beautiful. It's, um, it's by Natalie Grant, and it's called Clean. Um, and here's the, I'll just share the, the first verse in the chorus with you. I see shattered, and you see whole. I see broken, but you see beautiful. And you're helping me to believe. You're restoring me piece by piece. There's nothing too dirty that you cannot make worthy. You wash me in mercy, and I am clean. There's nothing too dirty that you cannot make worthy. You wash me in mercy, and I am clean. Amen. And as Suzanne comes around, just we are we are doing her baptism separate from Bob and Jeremy's for a couple different reasons. Number one, she's not related to them, um, and but number two, um, we wanted to to mark this. She can come on back. We wanted to mark this as something that's special and different. Um, because in the church of God, um, baptism is not what we believe saves you. Uh, Suzanne was raised in a different tradition. She was baptized as an infant. And she doesn't want to not respect that tradition or her original baptism. But she has gone through things in the last few years. And in going through those things, she felt that it was important for a fresh start. A fresh baptism, a fresh anointing. And so she's come here this morning um, to be dunked, not to be baptized, right? Is that the way we talked about that? Um, submerged, submerged. Um, and so uh, she wants to continue to honor the, the tradition that she was raised in, but this is a special moment and a special time for her. And so uh, the youth have come to join her, and I want to invite any other uh, friends, special friends, special family that, that's here this morning that would like to come and be a part of that, um, to, you can come and, and stand here to, as a witness to this. They all just so. <laughs> <laughs> can just everybody come? They're all, <laughs> They're all your family. So did you want to say anything else other than? Yeah, just a few, just a few words. Um, I just wanted to say that a lot of times and in, in within the last couple years, you know, you guys have seen us go through a lot. I mean, you've seen us really grow up, um, got married or engaged and got married and had a baby and, you know, lost a baby and had a, an, another beautiful baby. And um, you've really seen us grow up and you're my family. And I just, um, I wanted to make this expression for you and to just thank you for, for being our family. Um, our families are kind of far away. And so, you are it, and we're, we're just so blessed. And so a lot of times I see, I see my life as a, as a mosaic where it's just so many broken pieces put together to just make something beautiful. And um, just because I'm doing this doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect, and um, I'm going to have a lot more hard times, but I'm just, I just wanted to, I guess, make, the, make you all know that you, are, you mean so much to us and to um, keep praying for us as we go through this short, short life. Well, I'm going to let Ryan take us out of here with a song because I'm soaked. Um, and it's cold outside, so I'm not standing at the door today. So God bless you all, and may his grace and peace be upon you. Thank you for being a part of this special service today. Amen. Amen. You guys are dismissed. The greatest day in history. Death is beaten. You have rescued me. Sing it out. 
Jesus is alive If you cross the empty grave Life eternal you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive Wash me in. 